Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how that you can map your MIDI controller, in my case Innovation Impulse, to a layout in Mainstage and create a layout for it. So the layout basically connects your MIDI controller to on-screen controls in Mainstage. So let's start by doing that with the keyboard. If we click down here on the keyboard and click Assign, place some notes on the keyboard, you'll see it'll start to show up as being triggered inside of Mainstage. Let's click over here. I'm going to do the mod wheel, pitch bend, and then I'll do the sustain pedal as well. I'll turn off assignment, and then you can see that these are all working just fine directly from the keyboard. So now I'd like to build some on screen controls that look very much like what my keyboard controls look like. And um, start with, uh, I'm going to make a little real estate. Okay, so what you'll do here is you'll go down here to Group Controls, and on this keyboard I have a bank of nine buttons, nine faders. Let's start with the encoder knobs, though. I'd like to choose eight round knobs, and I'm going to put those at the top. You can take time to play around with this and lay the knobs out in a two rows, in two rows if you'd like. For my purposes, I'm not going to worry with that. So we'll put that there. Uh, let's go next with our faders under that. And we'll choose eight vertical faders. I do have nine on this controller, but I want to use the ninth one for the master output volume, so I'm not going to assign it as part of this group. And then let's do our buttons. So we have eight buttons. For the same reason, I'm only going to do Eight buttons instead of nine. So we go here and we'll put our buttons under the bottom. And you'll notice that depending on real estate, as you get smaller, then the label may drop off the button. That's okay in this case because they're right under the fader that I'm that they correspond to. Uh, and then we also do have the pad. So let's go here and we're going to do eight drum pads, two by four. And is a bit smaller and then this keyboard also has transport controls along the bottom so I'm going to also put buttons for those and in this case I only need six so let me ungroup these select the two that I want to delete and make this a little bit smaller oops and regroup them. And move those over here. Another control I like to have in general is under panel controls, and that's the MIDI activity light. And this will illuminate any time that there's activity on coming in through via MIDI. And we'll keep the smart controls around as well. There's another video that you can see that I've posted on how to assign and set up smart controls. So when you have the controls laid out here, kind of to your liking, then we want to assign them just like we did with the keyboard earlier. So let's start with the buttons. An important note is that when you're assigning buttons, you should press the button multiple times. This allows Mainstage to determine what kind of button you're dealing with. Okay, let's go ahead and assign these other buttons while we're thinking about buttons. Same thing for the pads. Let's go over here to the faders. Let's just assign each one of these faders. And then the encoder knobs. The ninth fader, as I mentioned earlier, I'd like to assign over here. And so with that, let me turn off the assign button and let's check it out. So we have this one, this one. Those are all looking good. Let's just move those together. Here are our encoder knobs, looking good, same there, same there with all our pads, and the buttons are assigned here as well. And let's check these guys. Okay, great. Alright, so now that they're all assigned, we can go over here to edit mode, and we should be able to just play and hear some music. 
keyboard's working, it's corresponding to some some of the bads here. It does seem to be okay. Now, the key thing here though is that although we have assigned our controller to these controls on the screen, not all the controls on the screen are mapped to control something in the software. So to do that, there's an assign and map also in edit mode. And so what you do, for example, I'll show you a couple of these and then you can map the others uh, to your preference. But So you click assign and map, having clicked the control that you want, and then I'll go down here and I'll click the fader in the software. So you'll see this comes up and says that that control is now mapped to Steinway Grand Piano 1 volume. Now when I move this, there it is. You see the volume's changing on that. You can map these controls to anything you'd like. I also like to map, assign and map the buttons to mute so that if I have multiple patches or multiple tracks in, in main stage, I can mute and unmute. And we had assigned the output volume, which is automatically mapped to output volume. Another thing I like to do is take the encoder knobs across the top and match those down to some of the smart controls here as well. And so once you have this all set up the way that you like it in the layout, you can go to the layout and export the layout to a file. And this will allow you to then, at a later date, um, maybe in a different project, go in and import that layout into a different project. So all this work you've done to map your controller to on-screen controls, you could take that entire layout, export it, and then import it into another project, then go to the edit screen and map these controls to whatever you'd like to control over here. Hope that's helpful. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful. If you like videos like this, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.